Do you break into a sweat with even the thought of having company? I'm here to help. After trying just a few of my hosting tips, you'll be more than ready to say, come on over. Welcome to part three of Cooking Terms for Beginners and some intermediates. Today, we're specifically focusing on terms for prepping garlic. Now, the reason I'm spending so much time on this is because until about 15 years ago, I never cooked with garlic. So I didn't even know what I was dealing with with garlic. In fact, the first recipe I tried called for a clove of garlic. So I went to the grocery store and I got this. And I thought, wow, that is a lot of garlic. And I just kept looking at it and I thought, there is no way I'm gonna put this much garlic into a dish. So I called Millie Camp, my cooking extraordinaire friend, and I said, okay, don't laugh at me, but I don't know what a clove of garlic is. And she said, exactly this. You take a head of garlic that looks like this and you break it up into cloves. So this garlic is more of a white variety and you can see it has a papery skin and inside are what are called cloves. So they are individual, almost what you would call a toe of garlic and they could be small like this. In fact, most heads of garlic will have a variety of sizes, which is good depending on how much garlic taste you want. So each clove is individually wrapped in this nice little skin, has a little stem area and a little root area because this is a root type of spice. You can see the root here, the top. And now I have from this head of garlic, three cloves. Sometimes they will be more of a pink skin color or they could even be straight up purple, depending on what your grocery store carries. I really have never noticed a difference in the taste of the garlic. Now, full disclosure, when it comes to garlic in my household, Jimmy is usually the garlic person, but I can prep garlic, I just don't prefer to. And here's why. Garlic is exceedingly fragrant, exceedingly. So that when you are prepping with garlic, your hands, you're gonna feel like your entire being reeks of garlic. And unless you're fighting off vampires, which fortunately right now, I'm not. I'd better go home and catch 40 wings. No, 41 wings, 42 wings. I don't really want to reek of garlic, but it adds such wonderful, distinctive flavor to dishes that it's worth it when you like it. So once we have our head broken down into cloves, what do we do with it? Well, here's what you want to keep in mind. The more you mess with the garlic, the more sulfur it's going to release and the stronger the flavor. For instance, you might see that something calls for sliced garlic. I'm going to use the Jimmy knife. He loves this large knife. I have peeled this clove of garlic. You can see there's no more skin on it. I cut off the little root side so that it's smooth and I'm simply going to slice this garlic. I'm not, they're not big pieces. They're just little pieces, but I'm not really disturbing the garlic very much. This would be great for sauteing the garlic, meaning that you're putting it into a frying pan or some sort of pan with oil or some sort of fat and a fairly high heat, a medium high heat, and you're adding it at the end to work it into the whole dish. You do not add it at the beginning. Garlic will burn very easily. You want to add it at the end, sauteing. If you're throwing it into a dish where you're boiling more in a liquid, you can add it earlier. And in fact, the recipe will generally tell you when to add the garlic. So this is just sliced garlic, little slices, kind of pretty. Then something might call for chopped garlic. In that instance, you want to take your head of garlic and you're going to turn it into smaller pieces. You might also see diced. So here we go. We are turning it into smaller pieces. It still looks a little bit 
sliced, I might go in here and rough chop this garlic, releasing even more of the sulfur, getting it out there. I'm chopping it up. And the smaller the pieces of garlic, the less likely you're gonna feel it in your mouth. Nobody really wants to bite into a big old piece of garlic. Well, some people might. Nobody in my family wants to bite, bite into a, a huge piece of garlic. Ooh, it feels like broken glass is going right down my esophagus right now into my stomach. So this is a rough chop. Now you might see that it calls for a minced garlic and that generally means a pretty even chopped garlic that, or even a diced garlic that is uh, square in nature. So you can spend all that time doing that or you could get minced garlic. So in this lovely jar, oh, this is a new jar. You can see that this garlic, here's a really good look on the lid. It is tiny and it's fairly uniform and it's sitting in liquid. And I'll just pull a little bit of, out of here. Isn't that beautiful? It's already minced for you. Jimmy used to be kind of like, no, I want to mince my own until he found how thrilling this was <laughs> to just pull it out of the jar and use it. And on the side of this jar, minced garlic, it will tell you how much equals one clove of garlic. Let's take a look. It says a teaspoon of minced garlic is about one clove of garlic. So you take your teaspoon, measuring spoon, you dip it in there, and by the time you get it out of there and even it off, you've saved all that time of mincing this garlic. So let me grab a measuring spoon behind me and show you what I mean. So a teaspoon is more garlic than you think it is. This is a teaspoon. So if I were gonna get a teaspoon of minced garlic out of here, it would be this much. Now I want you to look at that next to a clove of garlic. That looks about right, right? Here's the clove. Here it is, already minced for you. I ask you, isn't this easier? The answer is yes. That was easy. So there's no shame in buying minced garlic. We'll put this to the side. Now I'm gonna show you another tool for mincing, pressing garlic. I'm gonna chop off the end of this without chopping off my finger. And you can see that I'm going to peel it. Peeling garlic, not my favorite thing because it gets in my nails. Don't love that. But if you love garlic, you're willing to do just about anything. Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. So I'm gonna get this skin off here. And yes, it does come off this difficult. It's, it's challenging. I'm gonna try this other end. Don't worry if it takes you a little time. If you have all the time in the world, peel it. If you don't, already minced. So we have this. I'm actually gonna slice this in half. And you can take this and you can go right over the garlic. And this is actually more pressing the garlic. So you can see on this that you've got little bumps along here. And you can see that there's a little bit of skin left behind just scrape that off. This tool is supposed to be a little easier. I would say that depending on the kind of garlic that you have and how fresh it is, how long it's been stored in a bag, I don't know, I'm not completely sold on this, but I like the idea of this. A garlic press looks like this. Now, when you press the garlic or when you smash the garlic, you are releasing more sulfur. So if you want a stronger flavor to saute in your pan, you can do that. You take, the, you take the blade of the knife, you smash it with your hand, and that's what you get. Or you can take a garlic press, which has an outside, an inside. You put your clove in here. And then what you're doing is you are pressing it through and you get all of this. You see this? And then you take your knife and you pull it off there. Now you can see that this is not in the same shape as this, right? Look how nicely this is chopped. This is truly like mashed. It is pressed. That is gonna be a different flavor. In fact, let's go over here and see what the actual terminology is when I tried to get a little more specific. Pressed garlic. 
what I used here, has a lighter, more delicate flavor than minced garlic because it excludes this inside skin. Look at that. That's left behind. You don't may not necessarily want this to be in your dinner. Well, I don't tend to like a strong sulfur flavor from my garlic, so I prefer the minced. I am not a big garlic person, and you may not be either, but you may like the essence of garlic. So when you want the essence, you definitely want more of a minced or chopped, even sliced, that will release less sulfur and give you more of what you're looking for as far as flavor. Now let's talk specifically about cooking with garlic. I think I mentioned that you want to add it last, the last minute or so, because it will burn very easily. But did you know that you can roast an entire head of garlic? That's right. It will still taste like garlic, but it'll be sweeter. So you cut off the top part of the garlic head, exposing the garlic on the inside. You drizzle some oil over the top. Remember, we covered that earlier. And then you sprinkle or dash some salt and pepper over the top of that. And you put it into the oven to roast. And I actually looked this up because I wanted to make sure I had this right. You're not gonna believe this, but it takes 45 minutes to an hour in a 400 degree oven. And that tells you how sturdy this is for a spice. So, what happens is it will caramelize, we covered that earlier too, caramelize this garlic so that it still has the essence of garlic, but it's sweeter and more palatable for those of you who don't enjoy a strong garlic taste. Okay, so that concludes part three, specifically on garlic, and wraps up all three parts of cooking terms for beginners and a few of you intermediates. Let me just say that when I started cooking, even though I grew up on a farm, I still had to learn some of these finer tools. And when I didn't know, I just asked somebody, usually a really good cook. Now you can actually look this stuff up online. And recipes have gotten better about explaining things for you. But if you have a question, it's okay. There's always someone there to give you the answer. So what I want you to do is find a recipe that you may not have tried before because the terms looked a little challenging and with your newfound knowledge, give it a try and make someone happy from your own kitchen. Welcome to part three of cookie tur cookie? There's no cookie here. Do you see the cookie? No. Come on over. Now go make someone feel special today.